Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today I am joined by Egyptian Pro Macarius, who you guys can see 58th in the world right now. 6,000, well just short of 6,700 trophies. We'll try to get it live today guys, playing this deck. Probably the f most free-to-play friendly deck in the game right now. Only two rares, no epics, no legendaries, hog and mortar. Let's go ahead and jump into some live matches. I'll be right back with you guys. Alright guys, we have found our first match, and it's against God. No big deal, just starting the video out strong against God. If we can beat God, I mean, what can't we beat today, right? And it looks like he's playing a giant beatdown deck with Musketeer as well. So, obviously not giant three Musketeers. It looks like maybe a mini P.E.K.K.A. version, like the old school giant beatdown deck. We attack that left lane hard with the Hog Rider. He's gonna get a bunch of damage on our tower. We got a bunch of damage on his tower. The log comes down maybe a little bit late there. The Mega Minion will get one. No, I take that back. The Zap comes down so just like that guys not even a minute into this live match the first live match of the video we already have a huge damage advantage and that's the cool thing about this deck guys and this is not a new deck by any stretch of the imagination but the cool thing about it and the reason that I think it is the most viable free to play friendly deck it's very easy to level up you just have to focus on rare requests using hog rider or trade tokens or whatever and then just level up your mortar as far as a common card in this deck and the thing about the thing about both of those win conditions is that Hog and Mortar both aren't in a beautiful spot. But one second, let me pause that thought, guys. We have a big push coming down. I want you guys to understand how to defend against Golem and Giant pushes. We're gonna set up with a Mortar. We're gonna bait out their Zap as we did early on there. I think with Zap, with the bats, and then we're gonna drop the Minion Horde last. You can defend against a lot of monster pushes with this deck, whether they be Golem, whether they be Giant, and you can do a very good job just using that defensive mortar you bait out their spells using your smaller more affordable cards first and then you can punish with the minion horde and then as you get into your second defense or your third defense you can start switching things up you can use the minion horde first or you can use in different order different locations and just keep the opponent guessing and that's exactly what you can see that Macarius was able to do here now two spirit goblins actually connect to that left tower taking it down to 16 HP and we're gonna set up again with the defensive mortar I'll finish my point Zap is actually going to take down that left tower. I'm going to finish my point uh, that I was trying to make earlier in this video in just a second. Sometimes just the fast-paced nature of these matchups prevents me from really kind of breaking down the deck uh, the way I want to. Maybe I'll take more time at the beginning of videos to start doing that. Either way, this time, uh, again, just doing a good job keeping those cards. And look, at we're able to cycle all the way back to another minion horde. We started out, just like I mentioned, guys, we started out with the minion horde in this matchup. And with only 15 seconds left in this match, I think this is going to be an easy victory, or maybe he made it look easy at least. And you're going to see again the defensive mortar set up here. Uh, seven seconds left, fireball comes down. A nice log there by the opponent, but again, we are ready there with the spirit goblin, which is going to trip up that prince before we can get to the tower, guys. Very, very well done. At the beginning of the next match, we'll kind of break down again, like the leveling up strategy of this deck and why it's viable with those two different win conditions. Be right back in the next match, guys. All right, guys, so we are into match number two here. And and uh, so what I was saying, right? Hog Rider, not the best position for Hog Rider. I, I, I mean, every deck, it feels like every deck. When you're running Hog, it feels like every deck is running NATO or running different Hog counters, like a variety of different Hog counters, which even if you're playing 2.6 Hog Cycle, which is still viable on ladder, but it, it's tough. It's tough to outcycle two counters. That's why we have the Mortar in this deck as well. You can use both win conditions to keep your opponent on their toes, and if you run into an especially difficult matchup, think like a, a golem deck when you're playing mortar or a giant deck as we just saw when you're playing mortar or one of those pesky tombstone nato decks when you're playing hog rider it's okay with this deck and you have a bunch of swarm and zap bait and spell bait cards to complement those two win conditions again not a new deck but man as so many of you guys have been requesting me get macarius on the channel so i'm i'm i'm, I'm happy to actually finally get him on hopefully we can get a nice little win streak going here but the opponent here predator did a very good job of baiting out his zap spell on that other side of that right lane and then he didn't have it to protect his mortar 
quarter on the left lane, and he actually gives him a, uh, a well played on that. So we'll see how he handles this matchup going against another Mortar deck. It's funny that Siege is not in a good spot, but but Mortar is. Mortar is the exception to to that rule, I guess, at this point in the game. Expo definitely not in a great spot, even though some people still have success with it. Uh, and, and look at this. I mean. Just, these swarm cards just do so incredibly well in this deck. The zap has been baited out of the opponent, and now we answer the mortar with the mortar. Mortar's gonna go ahead and clear out those spear goblins, and then take care of his mortar. Let's see if we can get a hit on the tower there. Oh, unfortunately, we waste a shot there. And then the, uh, the goblin gang comes down, preventing another mortar hit. So we'll have to answer this, respond to this, excuse me, with bats. So, early on here, I guess a little bit of a damage edge goes to, uh, to Macarius, but this is gonna be a tough matchup here. Going against Prince, but we have the Hog, which is actually, I think, way better for, way better suited for a Mortar deck. The problem is, he also has the Miner, which is really immediate tower, uh, damage with that proxy card in the deck. So here comes the Charging Prince, and notice that he has Zap and Log. Really, really impressive that he's able to get around both of these spells so frequently. Two little spells in the last deck, I want to say, as well. And a big connection on the left tower here, guys. Taking it down to 1197. Now, one thing about the defensive mortars that I want to share with you guys that we haven't seen yet, but hopefully we see it in a future matchup, is what you can do against other kind of hog rider decks or other decks where you need to use your mortar as a distracting unit you can actually play it up like the opponent is doing in this match like predator is doing he's playing some of his mortars up high and that's a really nice mortar placement as long as you vary your location and the reason being especially if you're not normally a mortar player is that when you play a high mortar, just like he did right there guys obviously it didn't really work out for predator here as we had the hog ready in our mortar of our own but the idea there is that they have to answer that motor immediately it's going to distract say your hog rider but it's also going to be doing damage to either your support troops in this case you know spear goblins or goblin gang or the tower so placing that high motor at the center at the bridge is actually or not, not the bridge rather at the river is actually a really good move in some situations but this one early well not early on we're 45 seconds into overtime ash uh but you know into overtime here it's looking like this deck is this is going to be another easy match uh for macarius here he sets up with a defensive mortar it looks like he is happy just to defend and to fireball spell cycle we'll see a mortar a, a minor excuse me comes down the right tower charging Prince is not going to get through that mortar, and now we have a goblin gang, and the fireball really coming in handy in this matchup here for Macarius in the hog. Finishes the deal there on that left tower, and that's 2 in O oh, really quickly here in this video. Let's go ahead and hop into match number 3, guys. Alright guys, we are going into match number three, and I checked in the downtime. He is currently 22nd in the world right now, I believe at uh, 67, 22 trophies. So let's see if he can keep this win streak alive here against Antonio from Clash Chaos. So Mini P.E.K.K.A. in an Ice Spear to start out here. I wonder if it's the Hog Princess Rocket Mini P.E.K.K.A. deck. We will see, but Bats are going to do a good job. Obviously, no Zap or anything in hand for the opponent there, but they do attack it. Looks like it is the deck there, guys, with the Hog and the Minions. This is the deck that, that Simple, who actually co-hosts a lot of my uh, streams, uh, he loves this deck. His favorite deck in the game. Another really, really good player. So I, I call it the signature Simple deck here, guys. So if you're looking for another kind of semi-free-to-play uh, friendly deck, or a, a good viable ladder Hog deck, check out the one that Antonio is playing here at the top of your screen. I think his last cards are uh, obviously Princess and Rocket and what else am I forgetting there? We'll, we'll see. Anyway, we send in the Hog there, Mini P.E.K.K.A. again, ready to intercept him, but not before he gets one hit onto that right tower. We have the Bats there in the uh, right lane. Zap comes down. We're going to have to answer that Mini P.E.K.K.A. We do with a Goblin Gang, but it looks like this Hog might get to the left tower. We don't have any great response here. We have Minion Horde in hand. We don't have enough Elixir to use it. We use Spear Goblins, but not before that Princess and the Hog both get a hit on that left tower, digging it down to 1724 HP. Meanwhile, we do get his right tower down to 2054. So there it is. It's a zap. 
and I believe his last card is Rocket, although I have seen a few people using a Freeze version of this deck, but I'd say the more popular version is still uh, the Rocket, just in case you can't get that Hog through. So a Minion Horde played at the bridge here, right into the Princess. Definitely not how you're going to want to play this deck. Uh, probably a mistake there uh, by Macarius, and he does say oops. So let's see how he handles this. Uh, last second Goblin Gang there played, but Zap comes down, and oh no, ton of damage onto that left tower to going all the way down to 290 HP, and it gives the good game a pretty big mistake playing that minion horde right into the princess there, and now a princess at the bridge forces another minion horde out of Macarius, but keep in mind here, guys, uh, we need to do something, right? We need to do something fast, so it's going to be all about the aggression. If they're playing the freeze version of the deck, then they're going to have to... The fact that they're zap cycling tells me that maybe they are playing the freeze, and there it is! The defensive freeze, and oh my god, freeze is so broken, look at that. I mean, Mini Pekka just able to absolutely decimate that push, even with the support of the Mortar on uh, Macarius' end. And that's why he was kind of zap cycling that left tower out, because he has no direct damage. And it's also why he was playing that aggressive princess at the bridge. It all kind of makes sense now. I'm, I'm sure some of my viewers probably noticed that before I did. So, a little bit late on that freeze. So, he's not out of it yet here, guys. But the problem is he needs to... Oh, man. He, he has to distract that princess. He can't afford a hit on that left tower. And now he uses his mortar defensively ready for that hog rider. Of course... The issue here is, is that he needs to cycle back to that mortar again before the hog rider is down. He gets another swing in with that hog rider, taking it down to 1268 on the right tower. Another zap comes down. He's still a card away from that mortar. Instead, he opts to fireball. Freeze comes down, and that's going to be GG, unfortunately, taking the L there in match number three. Let's see if he can make it up and get back at it in match number four, guys. We'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys, here we go into match number four for you guys, and there we go. All right, so we're going against uh, this guy from Nova Stones. So we start out with an aggressive mortar, guys. Speaking of starting plays, uh, mortar is something that I've noticed him. Mortar or hog just going right in with the win condition is something that Macarius actually does in these matches. He's a very aggressive player with this deck, so this is going to be an incredibly... Uh, aggressive kind of play style when you're playing a deck like this and of course it cycles really quickly as well so I think a lot of you guys who like playing super aggressive decks are really gonna enjoy this one so here we go into an inferno tower interesting so a, a hog deck with the another hog deck with the inferno tower this time something that you don't normally see maybe in that version with the princess and the skarmy but it doesn't look like this is the version or the durga version with the minion horde but either way we actually connect a little bit late on that ice golem from the opponent there we connect that's a big connection with the mortar i, I forgot who i was asking maybe it was anaban last time i had him on but i was asking like how many mortar hits do you have to have against a tower to consider it a successful mortar push oh beautiful beautiful predictive fireball there knowing that minion horde was in this deck or at least he was going to play a goblin gang there and he gets a, a few hog hits he also gets that beautiful fireball takes that uh, minion horde out of cycle for the plus one elixir trade at that very very well played by the opponent here but still we have the damage advantage here about halfway through regulation in this match and we go ahead and we start out with a mortar this time the opponent's not going to miss that goblin or excuse me, goblin he drops the spirit goblin's not going to miss that ice golem excuse me and now we have two spirit goblins kind of chipping away at our mortar annoyingly in the right there and uh, able to mitigate any damage except for that one spear from the lonely spear goblin on that right tower so now splitting a goblin gang in the back and a hog rider played this time we play oh my god this guy is a prediction god this guy should change his name to god the first guy can change his name to whatever that is because two beautiful prediction fireballs, this time kind of playing uh, Macarius there, knowing that he probably wasn't going to drop the horde in the same location. He predicts it right there at the bridge and really nails all but, what, one of those minions from the minion horde? Really nice plays, unfortunately, uh, for him, though. Uh, Macarius still in the lead here, and he goes in with a hog rider, and this is what we're talking about here, guys. You know, this is one of those matchups that the opponent does have that Inferno Tower, and they're able to have it basically in cycle every time we're ready to attack 
attack with the hog rider but we can use we can lean a little bit heavier on the mortar and that's exactly what he's doing here now, this is going to be a big push in the right lane we exchange zaps one to his goblin gang one to ours and we're able to defend oftentimes even though the opponent comes in with a big push you know, it's really imperative, guys, if you're going to understand one thing about this deck, and it's probably the most basic thing to understand about this deck, is that you don't want to just start spamming your swarm troops, right? Play them one at a, one at a time. That's exactly how you see Macarius always doing. He played the, the Spear Goblins there, then he waited for the Zap to come down, and then he played the Minion Horde. And you're going to see him doing that in all of these matches. We'll probably do a couple more after this match, because I want to make this a little bit of a longer video, since yesterday's was a little bit of a, a shorter video. So here it comes again, and that's what we talked about with the High Motorist guys. Again, that's going to kill, worst case scenario, it's going to kill the Support Troops while distracting the hog rider best case scenario it's going to lock onto one of those towers uh while we distract the hog rider so speaking of hog riders ours goes in right lane that's a four for five trade as a hog rider player every time the opponent uses an inferno tower against your hog it's really a win for you and here we go again with that mortar defensively high up there in the center at the river uh just like we talked about a, a couple uh matches ago here so again, we're just going to start cycling in the back. Oftentimes with this uh, deck, guys, something that you'll find a situation that you find you'll find yourself in, excuse me, is a fireball coming down there very, very nicely. Not going to get the hog to the tower, I don't think, but taking it down to 760. Again, smart defense here. Mortar, yep, mortar placed very high. We have the zap. We wait for the spell. We drop our bats. Very, very nice uh, defensive sequence there again by Macarius. I was saying something there, and I totally, totally lost my train of thought. Uh, but either way, we'll, we'll watch the conclusion of this match. We are already a minute and a half, halfway through overtime here, guys. And the fireball comes down trying to protect that mortar here, guys, and keep that hog off of our right tower. All we have to really do is probably get one hog connection or a mortar connection and a couple fireballs and this is ours we still might be able to spell cycle here so a little bit of a juke push no hog coming down the left side for the opponent and let's see how we handle this instead the hog coming down the right lane again with the mortar we are ready is, he, is this going to be a tie guys is this going to be a tie so here it goes a hog rider and a minion horde we go into that Inferno Tower. We have Zap in hand. We do Zap that Inferno Tower. Can the Hog get to the tower? He can. That's one hit. That's going to put it Fireball range. Fireball Zap will take it out. Three HP remaining. All we have to do is cycle to another Zap and defend here. We have Zap back in hand, I think, already after these bats. Yes, there it is. Boom. All right. There it is. Three in one so far in the video. Let's do one more match, guys. I'll be right back in uh, with you guys in match number five. All right, guys, here we go into the fifth and final match of this live ladder video. Really enjoying this down the stretch top ladder replays towards the end of the season. I think what I'll do is, is, is maybe continue doing more live ladder series and then transition more to grand challenges, maybe early in the se uh, season, excuse me, with more kind of experimental decks. However, with that said, I do have an awesome, awesome, I just recorded it before this one, uh, final matches of a grand challenge with Brand Dank tomorrow. Don't miss that video as well. Ooh, we just narrowly avoid that uh, Prince Charge there. Last second with the Goblin Gang on the right-hand side of the tower there after the opponent, Ruben, from Kuwait team, who's a really good player as well. Uh, he could be playing a, a Giant deck or uh, maybe even a P.E.K.K.A. deck. It definitely is going to be a Giant deck. So let's see how we handle this matchup. Another giant matchup, but this time it looks like a little bit heavier than the first deck that we ran into, guys. So again, we already know this. This is beautiful because it will give you guys a blueprint of how to handle these beatdown pushes. We saw it in the first matchup. We're going to see it again. You'll use the same strategy against the Golem push, guys. And by the way, against Lavaloon, because obviously we're not going to have any in this video, I'm going to ask him to share a Lavaloon replay. I'll upload it on the second channel and on my Facebook page for you guys. So you have kind of a blueprint on how to handle a Lava Loon matchup as well with this deck. So that will be live uh, on Facebook the same time as this video is live at uh, Clash with Ash Official uh, or CWA Mobile Gaming. You'll find it there either way. Uh, and we'll also upload it to the second channel by the end of the day. So just a heads up there. And uh, the second channel is called Clash Royale Pro Gameplay on YouTube. 
So here we go, we're going to respond to this Mega Minion. He does get one hit in, though, and uh, <laughs> Macarius gives the wow. By the way, guys, Macarius wanted to be sure that I remind you guys to follow him on Twitter. So check out that information along with his player stats and profile, uh, thanks to StatsRoyale.com in the description below at the end of this video. So he's going to answer that Dark Prince with just a mortar there, uh, at least having the to, to pressure the opponent, Ruben, to responding immediately to, to that mortar, and he does so with a giant. So we have the Goblin Gang ready, and we're going to space out the Spirit Goblins, keep them separated from the Goblin Gang, make sure we avoid all those spells. And you can see how he's just doing a really good job separating all his spells, and in, in separate, or excuse me, separating all his swarm troops so we can avoid all those spells. That was a perfect defensive sequence to kind of watch, to, to figure out how to do that. So here it comes, another giant, and we're ready again with that mortar. And we have the minion horde ready as well. It's going to clean up nicely against the Mega Minion and the E-Wiz. Really, really textbook defense so far in this match. This might be one of those matches as we get 10 seconds into left in regulation here. But you want to kind of go back and watch Zap comes down and just watch how he handles this, especially defensively. So far, there hasn't been a lot to speak of offensively, but defensively, he's been absolutely playing this textbook here, guys. And again, a minion horde at the bridge, getting that immediate damage before the fireball comes down, and now we're able to just punish with all these swarm troops again, waiting for the zap to come down. This time, we're going to go ahead and let that giant lock on for two swings. That could prove costly, though. We do get a swing of our own with that hog rider, though, before the dark prince kind of takes care of him. And again, a minion horde right up there at the bridge going to take care of that dark prince and uh are they still one card away from fireball they are they're forced to play a giant and an e-wiz there pretty good defense though and now we have to respond to this if we had delayed one second later we probably could have gotten that mega minion hit with that fireball as well it's okay though we have minion horde back in cycle again see how fast this deck can cycle a zap to stop that dark prince's charge fireballs back in rotation for the opponent and here comes the hog rider immediately see how aggressive he is playing this guys very 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 aggressive and the e-wiz and the log not preventing that hog or preventing that hog from getting two swings but one swing does connect on that right tower and we have bats ready again and spirit goblins played at the bridge and a defensive mortar getting ready for that giant and he just knows you can tell that Marcarius just knows what the opponent is going to do before he even does it here just almost methodical in his his gameplay here guys and here he goes again a giant a mega minion setting up with a prince in the back we're gonna go in with the hog rider look at all those swarm troops we, we drop down and the zap all to get that hog to the tower and we don't ah he doesn't even get one hit in that was really nicely played there you can see that we comboed the hog with a lot of swarm cards this is going to be interesting defensive sequence here guys actually it's not that interesting look at that <laughs> this does a very good job of overwhelming again with the placement of the swarm i wish this was the first uh match that we showed win or loss here guys just it really shows you all everything that you need to know about this deck and how to switch up from using the mortar defensively and offensively so for a minute left in overtime we might be ending with a draw here guys We'll see if he can put, he can work his magic again. Setting up with that defensive mortar, and again the minion horde right there at the bridge. See how often he is playing the minion horde at the bridge here with this deck. We send in the hog rider here. This could be a connection. And it is, and the zap comes down. Ooh, that was so close to getting a second hit there with 37, 36, 35 seconds left in this match here, guys. Can we do it? No, oh, boy, that was close. That was close there, the Dark Prince. I was worried, I was worried, he almost got me. Uh, so Hog Rider coming in hot. Fireball. Oh, man, that's going to be it. GG. Zap comes down. Wow. He made it made it look easy there, especially on defense. I love that last and final match there by Macarius. And he told me that he plans to push to number one in the world to end the season with this free-to-play friendly deck, guys. I wish you a lot of success. This is a good video to watch, I feel like, to get kind of blueprints against beatdown in swarm decks and hog decks, all popular decks in the meta. So a huge shout-out again to Macarius. He's going to finish this video in 23rd place, guys, at 6,700. 32 trophies guys i hope you enjoyed the video make sure you follow him on twitter seems like a really good and friendly guy uh probably will give you deck advice too if you want it guys thank you so much for watching huge shout out to brent chong my youtube partner check out his information in the description as well guys thanks and as always take care guys